so thank you very much for the or organizers for giving this opportunity to present my work here. Uh, so I am a postdoctoral researcher in uh, quantum driving and I'm sorry. So I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the quantum driving and bio uh, complexity group in the University of Florence. And this is a theoretical research group. Uh, this particular work is a, a collaboration between our theoretical physics group and the experimental physics group from uh, Technical University of Dortmund. So I'll talk about uh, a new quantum protocol for image recognition, uh, which is based on something called quantum associative memory. And this work is, uh, so Filippo and Stefano, they both are uh, co-authors in this work and they both are present here. They have presented, you have heard Filippo's op op opening talk yesterday. So this is the rough uh, outline. So first I will start with a very brief introduction to quantum image processing. And then I will uh, discuss what is a swap test and swap test acts as the main tool for our uh, image recognition protocol. And in the last part, I will uh, discuss what is quantum associative memory and how we have used it to build our protocol. So starting with quantum image processing, uh, so the there are, there are three main steps of quantum image processing. The first one is you encode a classical image as a quantum state, which is shy here. And then you run this input state shy through a quantum circuit. And by default, a quantum circuit is a set of unitary operators. So the output of this circuit is a shy prime, which is again a quantum state. And now you uh, transform this state shy prime to acquire some particular classical information and which classical information that will depend on uh, what you uh, want to acquire for, from the from the image processing task. For example, this uh, particular picture here is for quantum age detection. So uh, this, uh, this is a binary image. And uh, after you uh, complete your age detection protocol, you see that in the image obtained, you can see the edges between, between the black and uh, white pixels. So if you perform this age detection protocol classically, uh, there are the time uh, complexity of this protocol is two to the power n, where this small n is the number of qubits that you use to encode the classical image. But if you do this protocol quantum mechanically, then the time complexity is just one. So you just need to apply one unitary operator. So this is an example of the exponential speed up of a uh, quantum algorithm over classical ones. So the, of course, the advantages of using a quantum protocol is first that it takes logarithmically less number of quantum units to encode the same information as using classical systems. And second is the quantum speed up of uh, protocols. And for this reasons, in recent days, the, the quantum image processing has gained a lot of interest and it has potential applications in many fields where image processing is necessary. For example, the automobile engineering, uh, space science, medical science, and many other. So quantum pattern recognition is again a very useful quantum image processing uh, uh, protocol so there are so this is itself a very very broad uh, uh, spectrum because the pattern recognition can be of various kinds for example you may have to recognize a, a small part from a large data string uh, constituted of uh, binary bits or uh, texts uh, also uh, you the you can have to uh, detect the general 2D images, uh, which can be binary or grayscale or color. A very specific ex example will be the fingerprint detection or the face detection, etc. So in this work, we are particularly interested about the 2D images, general 2D images, which can be binary or grayscale. We will not discuss the color image processing because as I will show, it takes a large number of qubits to encode a color image. 
So coming to the first step of a quantum image processing protocol, we have to encode the classical image as a quantum state. So for example, you have a classical image, which is M. Here, this M11, M12, et cetera, they just denote the pixel values and the their position in the matrix, it just denotes the pixel position. So you can just uh, visualize M as a classical image. So now we want to encode this image as a quantum state. So what we do is just we copy the first column of the classical image as the first n elements of the state vector and so on. So the last uh, column is encoded as the last n number of elements in the vector. And of course, a quantum state has always to be normalized. So we just divide it by the n prime, which is the normalization fact uh, factor. Now, this particular uh, encoding method has been termed the quantum probability image encoding and it was first uh, uh, proposed in 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 this uh, paper here but uh, there exist a large number of other encoding methods which are suitable for binary grayscale and color images for example two of the most used protocols are this uh, FR, frqy and uh, anyqr but uh, in 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 this talk i will not discuss about those because we just use the qpie so now I will uh, come to the next section is the swap test. So swap test is a widely used protocol for calculating the fidelity or the distance between two quantum states. Uh, so as, uh, as you can see uh, from here, after we input the classical image as a quantum state, we can manipulate it in all ways a quantum state can be manipulated so for example we have been given a target image which we want to uh, uh, want to uh, recognize and there is a set of reference images from which we have to search for the target image so what we can do is that we can encode both the target image and the re reference images as uh, quantum states and then we can just try every reference uh, image to see which has the most overlap with this uh, target quantum state so that is where the swap test uh, comes into picture so this is a uh, circuit for uh, swap test here we assume that chi and phi are the target image and the reference image i have shown chi and phi to be three qubit states but you can uh, draw this uh, circuit for any number of qubits so here zero is an auxiliary qubit i don't know how many of you are familiar yes yeah Oh, log, okay, sorry. So log two of n is the number of qubits you need to encode the n number of, uh, sorry, it will be it will be in uh, square. It will be in square, <laughs> sorry. Thank you, sorry for this. No, no, it's okay. Okay, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with the notion of a quantum circuit. So here each straight line, each uh, horizontal straight line, they actually denote a qubit and the direction of time goes from left to right. And these, uh, these small, small uh, squares are just the single qubit gates. And so, so this is how the circuit is uh, designed. First, you apply a Hadamard gate on the auxiliary qubit, and then you use that uh, had a, uh, use that auxiliary qubit as the control qubit uh, to apply the control swap uh, swap swap gate so what what does a swap gate do it just uh, swaps the states of uh, these qubits on which it is acting as the target and so we apply this control swap gate for each consecutive pair of qubits for chi and phi and lastly we again apply a hadamard uh, gate on the auxiliary qubit and then we measure uh, this this auxiliary qubit so in the measurement you will get either zero uh, uh, zero or one and the state will collapse to uh, that so you have to take a large number of measurements so suppose after a large number of measurements, the probability of getting zero is P0, then the fidelity of these two states will be two P0 minus one. So this fidelity is actually how you uh, understand how close or far these two states are, shy and phi. So for example, if shy and phi are identical, then you expect fidelity to be one. And if they are orthogonal to each other, you uh, expect uh, fidelity to be zero. 
So now, of course, we want to experiment with the real uh, quantum devices. So for that, uh, we have chosen the IBM Q devices, the five qubit and the seven uh, qubit systems. So what happens is that when we uh, construct this circuit and then run it on the IBM Q real devices, it of course uh, de uh, decomposes all these complex gates in terms of the simpler basis gates that uh, IBM Q provides. And the ultimate transpile circuit is, uh, is um, this. So there are a lot of uh, gates and these gates are noisy. And so it adds a lot of noise to your output. So that is what we uh, show in this uh, diagram. So here we assume that we have uh, the sh uh, states shy and phi, which are same. And we just want to see whether uh, simulating this circuit in the IBM queue gives the fidelity to be one. So uh, instead of a uh, Fidelity, I will just use the i, which is the square root of the modulus of f. And we just uh, ca calculate a mean value of i, which we called uh, i mean. So in this uh, diagram, in the y axis, there is the i mean. And in the x axis, there is this the number of qubits. And we see that when the state shy and phi, they both are single qubit state, then uh, this i mean has the value around uh, 0 0.7. So there is uh, still an error, but it's, it's, it's less because uh, you have single qubit states. So you need less number of qubits and less number of gates. But as we increase the number of uh, qubits, then it deteriorates very quickly. And of course, blue is the, the standard deviation. So, so we can see that when we have three qubit states, it becomes significantly noisy. And we were trying to uh, find how we can reduce the noise in the output. So that's when uh, this, this uh, destructive swap test came into picture. So the destructive swap test uh, has a different circuit than swap test, but the outcome we obtain is uh, equivalent to uh, swap test. So un, uh, unlike the swap test, we don't need the auxiliary qubit here. But instead of that, you have to measure all the qubits. Like here, we were measuring just the auxiliary qubit. But here, you have to measure all the all the qubits. Uh, so here, you, uh, also, also the arrangement of the gates uh, changes. Here, we were using the controlled SOAP gate. And here, we will use only the C0 gates. Uh, and how you read the output uh, from this circuit is a little bit different. So I will just show it here, for example. These red bits, they are the measurement outcomes uh, from the from the first three qubits, and the blue bits are the measurement outcomes from the from the last three qubits. So now you just take the pairwise and operation of these uh, bits, and if the summation of those uh, pairwise ends has the odd parity, then this basis state will contribute to the failure probability, and if it has uh, even parity, then it will uh, contribute to the success probability. So we just sum over all such basis states which has even parity. I mean, we sum over the probabilities, and that is how uh, we 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 get this p p here, and then we just calculate f f like before. So again, uh, if shy and phi are identical, then we expect f to be one. So this is how the transpile circuit looks in, in IBM Q. So it's much simpler. But again, it's for single qubit state. Like here, it, uh, it was for single qubit states. And here also, this is for single qubit states. But it looks much more simpler. So we expect that the noise will also be significantly less. So now we just want to try this destructive swap test for simple binary images uh, for 2 qubit and 3 qubit images. So the image on the top is the data for the two qubit images. For example, uh, this the, uh, every every column compares a target image with a reference image. Uh, in the first four columns, uh, the target image is this uh, black black square. It's actually classically a four pixel image. And in the first column, because both the images are identical, we expect uh, the the uh, overlap to be one. And as we go uh, towards right, the overlap should uh, uh, 
decrease and and the last column is for orthogonal images like if you encode these images as quantum steps they will be orthogonal to each other so we expect that the fidelity will be zero so this uh, green green circles and the black boxes they are uh, the data from the from the ideal value like if you calculate the ideal uh, value uh, and these black are uh, from the from the quantum uh, simulators provided by ibm q so quantum simulators are just uh, classical computers that behave like a quantum computer and this blue diamonds are the the standard deviation of the data so as uh, we can see from the from the plot above that uh, it's it's well behaved i mean the comparative behavior uh, between the overlaps for the real ibm q systems it's it's still uh, quite good and when we come to the, the to the 3 qubit images so, uh, for example here this is just this uh, 4 by 4 by 2 images and each image can be encoded using 3 uh, qubits and then uh, this this behavior becomes a little bit confusing of course you can see uh, from this from this red stars but if you compare this picture with the uh, plot previously obtained so for example here when the states were same for 3 qubits the overlap was around 0 0.2 which uh, should be one I, ideally but here for the three uh, qubit states, the overlap is 0 0.6, which is a huge uh, improvement. So that's why we have chosen to uh, use destructive swap test for the rest of this uh, project. And now we um, apply the destructive swap test for larger images, but of course we do not have access to larger IBMQ systems. So each of this image is uh, 32 by 32 uh, pixels classically, and we encode it using 10 uh, qubits. Uh, I mean, we need 10 qubits to encode them. Of course, we can use the IBM Q quantum simulators because they have 32 qubit uh, simulators, but we cannot use the real system. So what we do is that we divide each image into two by two blocks and then just compare two blocks which belongs to the same uh, coordinate from, from both the pictures. And then we calculate the overlap for each of each each such blocks and now we do an aggregation over all the blocks and the aggregation is a little uh, involved i do not discuss how we do this i mean it's not as simple as just you know summing the overlap for all blocks and then uh, divide it by the number of pixels it's not that easy it's a more involved but the important thing is after the aggregation the behavior of these uh, red red stars is still quite uh, in 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 good agreement with the ideal uh, values so so that's good for us and also this is how we overcome the size limitation of the real ibmq system so now so this was for the the binary images uh, up to this now we just extend this uh, destructive swap test for for grayscale mnist images and we do the same thing again like uh, divide it into blocks and then do an aggregation over all the blocks and this is how the how the plots uh, look and uh, again again uh, it's it's very well behaved i mean of course there is this uh, difference between the ideal value and the real value because of the noise but the comparative behavior is uh, consistent and in the in the plot below i show when, uh, we, when we apply the destructive uh, swap test to a uh, real life uh, scenario so this is a medical image uh, the image of human blood vessel so there is a so 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 there is a small uh, vessel and then there is this big vessel and you can see that in the small vessel uh, there is a part where there is a small cavity so what we want is that we want to we, we have a reference image of a sample cavity and we want to compare parts of this small vessel with that reference cavity to find uh, we, uh, whether there uh, exists a, a cavity in this smaller vessel. So here in, in these columns, the picture in the left is the uh, image of the reference cavity which we, we have collected from another blood vessel picture and uh, what we can do is just we take this small blood vessel and then divide it into a number of 
sections. How this uh, division can be done, we do not discuss this. We just assume that it's possible to, you know, divide uh, this this image into uh, sections and then compare each section with the image of the reference cavity. So again, this shows a good uh, agreement. So we can say that uh, this uh, destructive swap test can be a good uh, candidate for a quantum pattern recognition protocol, and it can be used as you know medical imaging. And this is the as I as I said this has an experimental part and this is the data from the experiment with uh, NVC uh, and these are this this uh, red curve is the ideal curve and the black black circles they stand for the data obtained uh, by simulating the NVC and of course it's for single uh, qubit states because we had only only three uh, qubits available by NVC and it shows good uh, agreement. So now I will come to the last part and the part which is actually related to machine learning. So it's the quantum associative memory part. So of course we can uh, compare the images one by one to each other, but it's also possible to just do it using uh, one, one simulation of the circuit. Uh, so what is uh, associative memory? So if uh, we look at a classical computer, then it uh, works by uh, searching for uh, the 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 particular uh, address in which and uh, in in which the data is uh, stored like uh, it, it, it needs the address of the memory, but this is not how human brain works. For example, we can recognize a person or an object, but we don't necessarily need to remember like the date and time we, we, we made that object or the person. So this is what uh, associative memory is. And uh, of course, neural networks are uh, an example of uh, associative memory. Now, the quantum associative memory was uh, introduced in, in this paper by Trugenberger, and uh, it, it hugely improves the classical associative memory because it can overcome the large capacity requirement. Some of you know the, the Hopfield neural network, then you know that the capacity is uh, very small. So this quantum associative memory can actually overcome that uh, problem. And uh, if you know about the K nearest neighbor method in supervised learning, this is also an example of uh, quantum associative memory. So the K nearest neighbor method is just that you select a particular K and you uh, look at the most uh, close uh, K number of, uh, so here the, the cross is uh, the state that we want to recognize and these are the reference patterns and it, here, here, here K equal to five. So you look at the five closest elements and the, and the most number of uh, elements which belongs to a particular class, that class is associated with this uh, target image. Anyway, so this was just an example, but we now have developed uh, associative memory based uh, quantum protocol where we use the destructive swap test as a component. So again, uh, this shy here is the uh, quantum image state that we want to recognize. And we have three reference uh, quantum uh, image states, which are phi1, phi2, and phi3. So now we take a QDIT. A QDIT is just a quantum system with D number of levels. And we take the QDIT such that the dimension of the QDIT is same as the number of reference patterns. So for example, here the QDIT is basically a QTREAT, which has three different levels and the basic states are Q1, Q2, and Q3. And also there is an auxiliary qubit zero. And uh, so this is how the circuit looks. We prepare the initial state as this. So the shy is in a product state with this state and the auxiliary qubit is also in a product state with this state and what is this state it's just a superposition of the reference patterns with the qubit basis so as we will see the role of this qubit is just to act as the um, i mean the, the Q1 is associated with phi1 and the Q2 is associated with phi2. So if you make a measurement on this QDIT from the uh, outcome that you obtain, you can actually predict that you have obtained phi1, phi2, or phi3. So we will see how it works. So that is the function of the QDIT. So we'll prepare this initial superposition and then we just, uh, in, the, in, the, in the first part, uh, surrounded by this uh, dashed, uh, rectangle in 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 this part this is the usual destructive swap test so it does not act on the subspace of uh, 
Q, the the qubit and the auxiliary qubit, it acts only on the subspace of uh, chi and phi, and it creates the entanglement between uh, chi and phi. So this is how it looks. There are 64 possible uh, coefficients, uh, 64 possible basis states. The, so so each of these uh, q i is uh, associated with uh, one one particular basis state, and after we and and then after the destructive swap test we just use again i mean i would like to uh, remind you about the about about how to calculate the outcome from the destructive swap test so we just take this uh, uh, pairwise end between the between the bits that are uh, the measurement outcomes so here this gate is a quantum version of the classical uh, end end gate so if these two bits uh, outcome if the two bits has outcome one then uh, this auxiliary qubit which we did not use before this will just flip its state so this uh, this gates actually keeps a count of this pairwise end operation so then after we apply this uh, this gates here then the final state looks like this uh, so here this qi they uh, keeps account of the particular reference image and whether the auxiliary qubit is in state 0 or 1 this keeps into account the even parity or the odd parity so if the state of the auxiliary qubit is uh, 0 then uh, this will be even and if it's one then it will be odd so now we just need to measure this last two uh this qubit and the and the auxiliary uh the auxiliary qubit so from that outcome we can actually tell that which of these uh, uh reference uh, patterns has the closest overlap with the with 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 shy so this is what we do using a quantum simulator the the ibmq quantum simulator we could not use the uh, use the actual uh, quantum systems because uh, it's mostly the the highest uh, system we have access to is a seven qubits so we just simulate it in the ibmq quantum simulator so s1 is the target pattern and this s1 s2 s3 s4 they are the reference pattern here we have four reference patterns so we have to take a four level quantum system as the as the q here so we just take two qubits because it constitutes a four level quantum system and then we prepare this initial superposition as this so s4 is um, Mm, entangled with uh, zero zero so s4 corresponds to zero zero and s3 corresponds to one zero so this zero zero one zero they are just the basis states of the two qubit system which is just q1 q2 q3 here and then we uh, again uh, apply the same quantum gates of the destructive swap test first and then this uh, control gates and finally this is the output here so for example in the x uh, axis when the last bit is zero it corresponds to even parity and it contributes to the success probability and when the last bit is one the last three uh, bars they correspond to the failure probability and the first two bits they actually correspond to the cues here so we can see that the the success probability is highest corresponding to 110 so that actually matches with the expected case because s1 has the highest overlap with the target pattern and s1 is associated with 11 so yeah so that's how we can that's that was the protocol of the associative memory so that's um, that's all and thank you very much thanks for the for this nice talk we have time for a few questions, comments. Sorry. It's working. <laughs> Um, th thank you very much. Uh, I have a question right, regarding the, the very last slide, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, uh, if I understand correctly, like the second candidate is S three, right? Sorry, sorry, I did not get you. The second candidate. Yeah. Is S three. 
because it's one zero. Am, am I getting it right? No, actually not because this is okay. how the there is this output from the IBM Q. So they actually calculate the outcomes in reverse order. So here actually one zero corresponds to zero one, and zero one is one zero. I mean this is a common ah, okay, problem in okay, IBM okay. in Qiskit, and they de declare it that you have to read the outcomes in the reverse order. Okay, okay, no, awesome. makes sense. Okay, thank you. Other questions? If not, I thank the Sir Tamara again. Much.